a door cream. Today's video, we're going to talk about one thing that really gets on my gears with people, when people who don't know Prince start saying things about him. Was Prince gay? Have a look at this little sideshow of crap I found on the internet. Okay, once you've seen these pictures, I'll be back with you now. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersexual, and undecided. Viewers, please don't turn off or flag this video down because... I'm about to go raw on all these bigots and haters who love to stereotype us and talk crap. I'm back everybody. Okay, now you've seen that little interesting little sideshow. I mean, does everybody love the little um, say it to my face girlfriend gif? You know, yeah. Ha ha ha. Very funny, motherfucker. You know, that's what Eddie Murphy said when people were dissing Stu. Now, one thing I want to talk about now, as you guys all know, I mean, there has been some great videos up lately from people like Peace Love, Princess Friend, Mr. Ants, um, J.S. Scott, and a lot of others. And they talk about various aspects of Prince besides his music. I mean, we all love his music. His music is brilliant. I'm never going to dispute it, but one thing I always seem to notice, and I think Prince's friend kind of started this idea, we did a series of videos of why people hate Prince, he did an excellent video a while ago about um, was Prince black, and I mean he actually proved that, god damn that was a stupid question because it's clearly obvious Prince is everything as black as they come basically, he's always been proud to be black, he's a brother. But now we're going to talk about something that people say Prince is, but he's clearly not. I mean, I'm a gay man, I'm an out gay man, I know how to spot one basically. But it's not so much that the rumours that Prince was a homosexual really piss me off, but it's the fact that the criteria for judging Prince's homosexuality is based upon a lot of cliched and larded over stereotypes that have been dogging us gays since, basically since the dawn of fucking time, well let's be honest, at least since the 1920s, but, um, basically I have a few very good friends in the stamp world, I think as I've got older I seem to have become a lot more sort of um, friendly and people become my friends and, I'm making friends all the time, basically, you know, just like normal friends, you know, nothing dirty or salacious, and usually it gets to talking about music, and they're always like, oh, um, what kind of music do you like listening to, Tan? And I go, yeah, I listen to a lot of soul, rock music, R&B, but it's generally my two favourite singers are Prince and Michael Jackson, and they're all like, oh, Prince, isn't he gay? Isn't he some sort of freak, you know, and all this stuff? People seem to think that Prince is gay, and I'm like, Okay, so what do you base that criteria on? Oh, he wears high heels and he sings in a high voice and he wears lots of makeup. And I'm like, oh, okay, so gay people, we all sing in a high voice and we all have makeup on and we all walk around going, la di da, darling. I mean, can everyone see my makeup now? You know, can you see like my moisturizer or the thousands of dollars I spend on pedicures or any of this other shit? No, because they're stupid fucking stereotypes. And do I come across as a screaming Carson type queen? Am I going, tell it to my face, girlfriend? Do I go, Miss Fang? No. It's all bullshit, basically. And um, I just wanted, to, I decided I'd do a bit of research to see where this rumour about Prince being gay came from. And I think, generally most of the time when I hear it, it's from people who aren't really big fans of Prince. It's mainly people who might have seen Purple Rain. Here in New Zealand, a lot of people heard the I Want to Be Your Lover single, so... They're all kind of familiar with this image and this, and I mean, let's face it, it is pretty camp, you know. And also, but I think there's some deeper reasons. I think probably there are four main periods where Prince could have been labelled as gay. The first one is definitely this period around 79 where he had this beautiful blow-waved hairdo and he just looked, well, Jamie Foxx said it, he just looked so pretty, you know. And he does look kind of, um, well, his masculinity is clearly obvious here. I mean, he's got his chest hair and thing, but you know... I think this was the late 70s and like all these guys were trying to look androgynous and they weren't trying to look butch and I think the second period was definitely this period we call this the fish period this is the dirty mind era so Prince just looks like a little punk here basically I think it's old black slang or hobo slang for like a young guy who does things I mean okay he looks sexy and provocative but I wouldn't say he looks gay I mean he could just be like doing this to pick up the chicks and this is definitely a rock type look you know you know how all these rockers like I mean take the um bandana for instance I mean 
Steven Tyler from Aerosmith was rocking those things. He had them tied to the mics, he had the other members of Aerosmith dressed up in floral shirts and things. And never in the history of rock music has anyone said, oh, Steven Tyler from, um, you know, Aerosmith. You know, he's one of the really big lips, you know, it's like, in the mouth. No one has ever said he's gay, but Prince seems to get this shit. Now, the third period where people thought Prince might have been gay, and this is probably the period most people remember him as this Purple Rain era, this type of look. People saw these roughs and they thought, oh my God, he looks so gay. And I think, um, I know the Dave Chappelle sketch is much, much later, but you know how like Prince is wearing and he goes, and I saw Prince Ed look on the face. I went, yo, it's the skirts versus the blouses. And he gave me that look and it's got his big lips like a, you know, David Chappelle's lips. He's going, he gave me the look like he, he knows where he bought that shirt and he, and it didn't come from no goddamn men's department. And he talks about, you know, how he looks like a figure skater. So I think people saw all the purple ruffs and Prince had the makeup on and the big hoop earrings and the big perm. And he was jumping around the stage going, I would die for you. Darling, if you want me to. And he was singing in that high voice and he did the over the top screams like, Baby, baby, do you want him? Or do you want me? Because I want you. And people thought, okay, that's just camp melodrama. So that's sort of like the third period. And I suppose really there's five periods when I think about it. the fourth period is definitely the Love Sexy era. I mean, you've seen my Love Sexy videos. Some of those outfits Prince are wearing, I mean, they are really bordering the line between drag and just crazy dress. I mean, he looks basically like. Sheila and Kat, I mean, he's got the same long hair, you know, but I mean, again, it's a stereotype, isn't it? And then the fifth period was, there was a brief period in the early Diamonds and Pearls era, and this is probably the funniest, although I still find it offensive, and that's when Prince decided to wear this blue and do-rag on his head, this yellow do-rag, and there's a picture of him sucking a lollipop, you've seen it in my little thing, and people said he just looked like fish, and um, it looked kind of gay, and then I think, unfortunately, he did two things at the same time that kind of labelled him out as an effeminate gay man. And I think that was, um, well, free, actually. I'm thinking free. The first one is he appeared on the Arsenio Hall show. And he was doing that version. He was doing that song. And there's this part where he's doing this dance. And, like, one of the Game Boys grabs his ass. And it looks like he's pumping it, basically. The second one is, I can't remember what show it was. But Prince was performing one of the songs. And he showed up with a pair of arseless pants. And I'm like, Prince, why did you do this shit? And he was wearing that canary yellow outfit with the do-rag you know so everyone's getting their laughs and ha ha fucking ha ha and the fourth item was probably actually the cream video there is a part in the cream video if you slow it down and watch it in the second verse prince takes his guitar and he spins it around and places it under his butt and it looks like he's using the end of that guitar to anally penetrate himself which is a clear sign of homosexuality bottoming basically yeah, like I said, if you're a Christian who really hates offensive sex talk, I'll turn this video off, basically. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm going full gay here, you know, full sausage, you could say. And, I mean, but really, I mean, I think people are clutching at straws with this stuff, you know. I mean, this is just, this is like Prince, he's putting on a show, you know, he's trying to give the people what they want. I mean, the song was number one hit, so I got massive exposure. And, unfortunately, all of these gay moments, except perhaps maybe the Dirty Mind era, you know, he was in the public eye, he was getting the maximum public exposure, this was successful phases of his career, and people were like, who barely know Prince, they might have heard a few songs, they watch the video go, oh yeah, that's that guy who wears all the purple and he sticks the guitar up his ass, and oh, wasn't he the guy who like, had the arseless pants, oh he's got to be gay, because gay people do that, you see, that's what, that's how dumb and ignorant some people are. I mean, I don't think I've ever worn an arseless pair of pants in my life. I don't wear turbans in my hair. I don't walk, I don't wear fucking jewellery or jangly shit around my neck. I don't put makeup on, you know. My, my skin is naturally this good, you know. But it's just stereotypes. I think that unfortunately if you watch most TV, especially in America, the stereotypes of gay men in particular, I'm not going to go into lesbians or transgender people or RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, I love all those shows, but I mean... I mean, basically, a drag queen is a drag queen. You, you're gonna, you see what you get, you get what you expect. But not every gay man is a drag queen, you know. So basically, so um, people just watch these shows. They see characters like Carson from Queer Eye for the Strike. I know it's getting an old reference now, but he's like, you know, very camp, very effeminate, very bitchy. He's going, oh my god, look at these clothes. They are so dated. Oh my god, I'm gonna get you into something fabulous. And he gets him a fucking glitter-covered handbag or some shit like that. And that's another thing, the words fabulous and tragic. So 90s, lose them. And then you've got movies like The Birdcage, okay, I know that's 20 years ago, where you've got like Nathan Lane doing the over-the-top homosexual, and Robin Williams playing his partner, and they've got that house, and it's full of all these chintzy statues and homoerotic things, and 
you got stereotypes like Egador Spartacus. He's like, oh, when are you going to put me on stage with your little watermelon rockets? You know, and they're singing camp songs. And then you're like, okay, we'll do some modern ones. How about Cameron Tucker from Modern Family? That guy is not only offensive to gay people, he's offensive to fat gay people like me. I mean, he's camp, he's bitchy, he's not particularly bright, he's always meddling. You know, he's basically the butt of most of the jokes in the show besides Gloria's loud voice. Ay, 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 ay! You know, I mean, yeah, we've got the loud Hispanic woman, gee. How imaginative is that? You know, and um, I just think that there was actually one show on television that showed gay people in a positive light. And that was a show that was only on for one season. I think it was about 2013, 2014. It had, I can't remember the two guys in it. One was Jewish, one wasn't, and yeah, and it had that um, amazing black woman called Nene Leakes playing like their best friend. And um, it was a happy gay couple. They were normal. They had a friend who was like some straight woman down on the luck, and they had a nine-year-old daughter. It was a nice show. It wasn't too cute or saccharine like Full House. It was a good show. I mean, it had good storylines. I mean, the gay couple loved each other. They weren't out doing drugs. They weren't out partying. They weren't dressing up in drag. They weren't calling each other fabulous, this and that. They were just normal, everyday guys. You know, that just happened to be gay. And I mean, the show lasted one fucking season, and I know why. Because people don't want to see gays being normal, they want to see them acting crazy. So they take people who make themselves look extreme, like Prince, you know, with this, all this over-the-top hoop earrings and ruffled shirts and all this other camp shit, and they expect them to play up to these stereotypes. Oh, and of course, probably the most glaringly obvious one now, this show was big in the 90s and 2000s, but it's come back, is Jack from Will and Grace. The man is a walking fucking cartoon. I mean, how many gay people do you know are actually like Jack? Jack is camp, he's bitchy, his best friend's that fag hag Karen. I mean, Jack doesn't have a job, or if he does, it's always a shitty job. He's basically just leeching off people. I mean, he's just the worst type of gay stereotype you can find. And so, now we've just, now I've had my rant about gay stereotypes. We're going to talk about if Prince was gay. I mean, we've had seen the evidence about Prince. I've talked about Prince. I've talked about depictions of gays in the media. Just one more. Here in New Zealand, we've got this guy... And this year, Akira, you probably haven't heard this guy. He's a guy called Colin Maffera Jeffrey. And he's just like, I don't know what race he is. I think he's Indian, possibly Samoan, but he's totally Kiwi. He's got a real Kiwi accent. And sometimes he can play the straight guy and he can play it really, really well. But he was on a show called New Zealand's Top Model and he was just so camp and so bitchy. He often dressed up in drag. He was bitching around. And then he, he became the darling of TV. Like there was one part on TV where they were judging hot cross buns. And he talked about how fabulous certain hot cross buns were. And he was giving them like the fabu treatment and all this type of crap. And everywhere you turn, he's like doing some gender project or some gay dancing thing. And he's just a negative stereotype of gays. There's non-stop partying, camp bitchy, love drag, love makeup, have high voices. Okay, I mean, maybe I do own up to that stereotype. I mean, I don't sound so high pitched when I'm talking. But when it comes out on video, I sound like fucking Millie Mouse on Helium. Yeah, so you got this. It's just shit, basically. So let's talk about Prince. Okay, first of all, first evidence was Prince gay. Okay, we've got a few photos. Okay, some of the songs, like Do Me Baby, we don't know what he's singing about. And the song, like, you know, Anastasia includes the line, Where did you play with anyone, boy or girl? Okay, that's bisexuality. But he's actually not singing the song from his perspective. He's singing it from any perspective. I mean, Prince would record a lot of songs for female artists and he'd do guide vocals for them. But... Whenever you saw Prince in public, he always had beautiful women on the time. I mean, you look at all the people Prince has gone out with. Vanity, Sheila E., you know, um, Mighty, um, Manuela, um, Judith Hill was his last girlfriend, you know, Tamar, Sheena Easton, um, Carmen Electra, you know, um, Anna Garcia, I mean, and Susanna Melvoin. These are men. These are women. Prince was always with these women. He wrote these beautiful songs about these women. He wrote graphic sexual anatomy songs, you know. You must have been a virgin, there's a river of blood, you know. Um, let me get my tongue up in the crease, baby. We should fuck, baby, right now. You know, I mean, he sings graphic songs about having sex with women. A gay man would not sing a song about having graphic sex with women, and he would be cringing majorly. I mean, pussy scares me. Fish scares me away. Prince loves it. Just about every Prince album up to 1998, when he became a complete fucking prude, basically, is about sex and fucking. And realistically, every album from, 20, from Planet Earth onwards to the end also had songs that alluded to sex. I mean, Hit and Run Phase 2 was a great album, mainly because it had a lot of very dirty songs in it. You know, I mean, songs like When She Comes and, you know, Too Young to Dare. I mean, they're sex songs, basically, you know. 
Yeah, I mean, and I mean, he's singing about making a brother want to cream, and even one song, I mean, he's singing about how, you know, he's a cat, I mean, he's a dog, and he wants to have sex with a blooming cat, you know, but every time, every single one of these songs, he's the male, she's the female, you know, he's singing about women, and Prince said it himself, you know, I mean, he dresses up and acts like a woman, because he wants to get with the girls, and try to get with them on their level, but at the end of the day, it's all a trick to get sex, I mean, there are stories about Prince on tour, you know, like, you know, he'd have you know, he'd make the girls jealous because one night he'd go off with Vanity, another night he'd go off with um, Susanna, the other, I mean, sorry, what's it, Susan Moonsey from Vanity Six and stuff. Well, then he'd be going off with Mighty, but sometimes he might forget about Mighty and pick up another girl and have sex with her, you know. I mean, Prince was a dog. He was having sex with women all the fucking time. All his music is about women. Where does this gay shit come from? And then even to make it more going on is that I talked about how most of the, oh, it wasn't Prince Gay rumors come from when he was visible. If you look at the periods when he wasn't that visible except to us fans, like virtually post-2000, Prince wasn't wearing any dresses, he wasn't wearing anything camp or bitchy, he toned down all the makeup, he was always wearing well-tailored suits, he looked elegant. And then basically, from 2012 onwards, he went into his whole sort of Phil Spector pimp vibe look with the big afro and the dashiki and the medallions, and he had all these beautiful women swarming around him. I mean, who the fuck would say that's gay? It's just so dumb, and then, like, you go right back to the start of his career. 1978, nearly when he was just a young guy, I mean, he was just wearing, like, a jeans and a fucking leather vest, you know. That's not gay, you know. I mean, okay, it might be sloppy gay like me, but... And I mean, like, and I mean, okay, I mean, Prince sings in a high voice in some of his songs, but there's a lot of songs where he's singing in a really deep growl. I mean, Calhoun Square, for instance, Poor Goo, you know. He's, he's just a really good singer. He has a fantastic range, and a lot of songs, I mean... You know, like, um, take the song, How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore, it goes, How come you don't call me anymore? And then you hear him talking in a really deep voice. It's just a lousy damn, baby. You know, and then he does the old Morris Day old man pimp voice. There's nothing going about it. It's like, come here, baby, this is a $50 bill. When's the last time you saw one of those? Yeah, that's right. You know, it's all about the status to that. Yeah. You think of all the time songs of Morris Day doing that slick pimp ass shit. You know, I mean... Prince wrote all that shit originally. I mean, Prince was doing all those voices. Prince told Morris to act like that. How many gay men know straight culture so fucking well? None. This guy is 100% straight. In fact, I would even go further. I mean, now we've mentioned that Prince is 100% straight. Not only would I say he's 100% straight. Okay, there was a period around this era where he was quite tolerant of minorities and differences. Like, he talks about, you know, drag queens and stuff on this album. But... 1998, he met Larry Graham. He got deeper into the Bible. Prince had been a Christian all his bloody life, basically. You know, in the early days, he didn't mind gays. He said, you know, whatever floats the boat, you know, as long as I buy my records, you know. 1998 onwards, he started to become anti-gay. He became actually homophobic. He was saying things like, you know, God did not intend gays to live. And there was one song going, either you must be you must be high or gay in a song. You know, and there was like, there was a performance on stage where Prince was doing a limp wrist to send up gay people. Prince, of anything, wasn't even a friend of gay people. By the time of his death, he hated gays. He believed it was wrong. It was against the Bible and all this shit. So, I mean, not only is it offensive to label Prince as a gay because he apparently acted gay in the 80s. I mean, first of all, pretty much the whole gay period ended around 1991. You know, he didn't even like them. You know? I mean, Prince used to have bodyguards at his shows, like Elvis. Like when Prince went told he made sure there were no pufters in the, in the periphery. The last thing he wanted to do was have sex with gays. I mean, okay, I know Jamie Foxx made all those jokes about having sex with Prince and he did that gay Prince in the butt out jeans. Yo, woman! The, one time, Sheila E. Pod cream all over me. Or was that vanity? Oh, I mean, was that Morris? Wee! You know, I actually think Prince might have found it funny then, but if Jamie Foxx did that shit today, Prince would sue. He wouldn't find that funny. He'd go, okay, that's death for me, man. And we all know how quick Prince was with the old litigation. So, again... Not only was Prince gay, and Prince was homophobic. And believe me, when he's got so many gay fans, although I don't really see too many gay fans on YouTube or anywhere else, but I mean, maybe he doesn't have that many gay fans, you know, so... It kind of... But I actually had to get past it. I found it very hard, you know, that I loved this artist so much as music and everything, and yet he didn't want to give people like me the time of day. As far as he was concerned, people like me should be burning in the hellfires of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know? And, um... 
So, you know, when a person says, oh, you like Prince, oh, isn't he gay? You can see why I'm going to get angry. And I, hopefully you guys will see this too. I mean, I know all of you guys, I don't think anyone I know in the Prince world is gay. I might be the only one, you know? I mean, I mean, and that's the funny thing about it. There's a lot of Prince fans. Some of them, you think they're almost gay, but they turn out to be like super straight. They've got wives and children. Yet they're still quite camp and effeminate. I mean, I'm probably the least camp and effeminate out of a lot of you guys. I'm sorry. I'm probably one of the butchers, you know? I mean, but yet, I mean, I do consider myself effeminate at times. Like, I'm getting on this rant now about it, but it's just so stupid. This, oh, isn't he gay? I mean, if you want to, if you really want to piss me off and just be fucking dumb, you know, basically call Prince a fag. Call, call Prince out a fag and see what happens, okay? And I think finally, okay, this might be getting a bit racial here, so I mean, all my brothers and everything else, I mean, if you find this offensive, I do apologise sincerely. Being racist, I think people's I think there's this, like, African-American standard of masculinity. And I think especially through the 70s and 80s, you had all these really ultra-butch singers like Barry White and Teddy Pendergrass, you know, all these big mean mountains, you know, as, um, Eddie Murphy said, you know, big Kentucky fried chicken eating motherfuckers, you know? I mean, ultra butch, and even Eddie Murphy, I mean, that motherfucker has a lot to answer for. He's going on about Michael Jackson being a fag and stuff, you know? I mean, he was real homophobic, even though he was picked up with a transsexual prostitute, Eddie. Someone's in the damn club. I think that's why Eddie's doing all those shitty movies now, because if he starts fending people and swearing again, they're going to basically release those tapes of him, you know, probably picking up gay guys for sex for all I fucking know. But anyway... There was this masculinity, people like Teddy Pendergrass, and there was all these songs like, Oh baby, I just want to make love to the cherry baby, you and me, gonna do it all night long. They were singing in this ultra deep voice, they had like really bushy beards, they had fucking chest hair and metal saying Aquarius, and they always had like these, and Rick James is another one, even though he had the permed up hair and makeup, he was still like a lady killer basically. So you had all these ultra-masculine, ultra-butch singers, you know, all these black men singing about fucking... I mean, Marvin Gaye is another one, I mean, despite the name, Marvin Gaye was as butch as they come. Even Stevie Wonder was butch, you know. But for some reason, the more effect guys like Prince got a lot of shit, and even worse than Prince, the one who got the most shit was poor old Michael Jackson. Boy, did he get a hard time from it all. So, there you are. I mean, and of course, you know, I mean, Prince definitely not gay. I mean, I won't say for a second he's gay, but... Michael Jackson, well, the jury's out on that one, you know what I mean? I don't even think Michael was gay. I think he was just asexual, really. I don't think. He was so dedicated to his career and his music. I don't really think he had time for women, and I think, because there were some women who did him wrong in his life, I think. And also, he saw some of the shit going on with his brothers. He watched their marriages fall apart. And he just saw the way how Joe treated Catherine. I don't think Michael wanted really to be involved with women, men, or anyone for that matter. I think, to him, the music was everything. And he had the kiddies around because he wanted to escape, you know? I think Michael's whole life was about escape in a lot of ways, and yeah, but I mean, for some reason, like, if you ever talk about, like, black singers, you know what I mean, you know, if you talk about the mas the two whose masculinity are always drawn into question are Prince and Michael Jackson, yet in my opinion, Prince and Michael Jackson are probably by far probably the two best singers in the whole black world, so there you are, there's my lines up on Prince, basically, Prince wasn't gay, I mean, basically, and the only reason why people think he was gay is because it's based on negative stereotypes of gay people as effeminate screaming bitches who take drugs and have lots of sex, basically. So there you are. The door cream's around to save. We'll get back to the hits B-sides in the next video, but I just thought I might want to add it because, first of all, I don't think anybody has um, done this. I mean, so be a friend, subscribe to my videos, share it. You'd share it around, you know, because... And I mean, even if you want to make a response for you, I mean, I'm a gay guy talking about shit. I just want to see how some of you straight people or even bisexual people, if there are any of those, feel about these rumours that Prince was gay. And I mean, you can't say it doesn't happen, because everywhere you turn, every one of you will have at least one story where someone's asked you who you listen to, and you say Prince, and they go, oh, isn't he gay? You know, because it is just such a common fucking rumour. So there you are. Peace and love to everyone, you know. May you live to see the dawn. You know, there's always a brighter tomorrow after a colder yesterday. You know, like in the breakdown, Prince said, you know, there used to be a win there used to be a door where there once was a window, so there you are. Alright, I'm over and out.